Hello, welcome to another installment of the Central American Group's podcast, in which experts discuss topics related to doing business in Costa Rica, El Salvador, and the rest of the region. Hello, welcome to another installation of the Central American Group's podcast. These uh, discussions that we have with experts, both in the organization and external to the organization, are centered on doing business in the Central American region. Uh, today, we have an external expert. It happens to be one of the uh, Central American Group's client companies and a representative from there. Um, the name of the company is Nax, and uh, I will let uh, Robert Doty, Doty tell you a bit about his company and a little bit about himself. And after that, we'll start with the questions. Sounds good, yeah. So Robert Doty here, I'm the current president of NACS. Um, I've held a number of roles within the company over the last 23 years from uh, machining, assembly, through engineering, sales, and, and now I've uh, taken over as the acting president. Our company is really specialized in providing scalable solutions to our customers, um, focused in a lot of life science space and medical med tech. Uh, we, provide, we provide services that include prototyping, production, um, semi-automated automation, all the way through to full-scale contract manufacturing. We've been in business for almost 30 years. We have a we have a central hub in the Minneapolis, Minnesota area, and we have recently, 2020, expanded into the Coyello, Costa Rica area. Oh, that's that's interesting. We're going to talk a little bit about that uh, today. Um, basically, if you could let us know what were the factors that motivated your company to establish manufacturing operations in Costa Rica. We looked at a number of different areas for, for further expansion, and we have a, a customer base in the United States that has a very strong extension into Costa Rica. Um, we have serviced those customers over a number of years, uh, 10 plus years, and we really wanted to get down there and provide more service and more competitive um, cost opportunities for our customers. And so we decided to expand into the Green Park Free Trade Zone and set up operations with the, the goal to really mimic what we do in the Minneapolis operations over a long period of time to bring our current processes and procedures down there to drive quality and um, hire some very good talent. What are you uh, hoping to accomplish in Costa Rica? We're really hoping to really be close closer to our customers so that we have great service and support and the ability to collaborate on new applications uh, we want to hire some really good talent, which we've already done, and uh, we'll continue to do so and provide very good, stable jobs for our employees down there. Um, we will continue to expand and grow as the market needs are there. Can you tell us a little bit about the reasons behind your choice of the Central American Group's uh, Green Park Free Zone as opposed to any of the other options that were available to you there? Sure. We... Uh, we, were, we looked at a couple of different options in the, in the Costa Rica area, and we felt that the Green Park Free Trade Zone was the best option. We, we had a lot of confidence in the, you know, we had to build out an infrastructure on an existing building, um, and we had very good confidence that it was going to happen on time if, within budget, and it, and it absolutely did. Um, I think we were within a day or two of the original schedule, and we had, to, we had to fight through the pandemic and some things like that throughout the process, and so that was... That was really impressive for us and it worked out really well. You know, Costa Rica is very well known for the quality of its workforce. It's got a very good educational system. As a matter of fact, it puts every year 8% of its GDP into education. So, you know, given those circumstances, what have you found with regard to the Costa Rican workforce? What's been, what has your experience been um, with individuals in, in that workforce thus far? Yeah, we've uh, we've been really excited about it. When we when we went to hire and, and really bring our people on board, starting in uh, September of 2020, we put a number of different job descriptions out, and I think within the first week we had around 800 or more resumes for different wow. different areas, such as machining, mechanical engineering, controls engineering, 
and uh, technicians and such. And so we went through a number of interviews with candidates, potential candidates, and um, really found some really good people. And we're excited that the, the talent is really there um, and we're, we're, we're there to grow. One thing that we've been getting um, and seeing as have a lot of other people uh, that are involved in manufacturing is the desire of companies to reshore uh, manufacturing to the Americas or the phrase they're using now is ally shore. Um, what we do find, however, is that rather than establishing an entire facility, uh, a standalone manufacturing facility, companies that have sourced manufacturing in Asia are looking to do the same in Central America. And, you know, from previous discussions, uh, I know that your company has uh, an interest in fielding this kind of response from companies that are looking to bring things back from China. Could, could you tell us with respect to that kind of an activity, what capabilities your company has? What kind of firms could call upon you to do subcontract work for them in Costa Rica? Sure. Yeah. So we're we're very much focused um, in the in the scalable solutions, and what we're able to do is provide a full turnkey automated solution or semi-automated solution to help our customers produce their product. So, in in the Minneapolis area, we are FDA registered, FDA certified. We're we're able to ISO thirteen forty five. We're able to handle very complex uh, devices such as drug delivery devices um, and med tech. We are, we are absolutely setting the same skill set up down there. And we're excited and we're looking at current opportunities that are, are likely to come from Asia because of logistics and, and cost competitiveness as well in Costa Rica. Um, so we're excited about that. And the, the neat thing is, is logistically, I can be on an airplane at 5.30 in the morning in Minneapolis and I can be in uh, San Jose at two o'clock in the afternoon. So it's it's readily accessible and the infrastructure is really, really starting to take place down there. That's great. Uh, we're glad to hear that. You, just to wrap things up here, what advice would you give to other companies that are considering establishing uh, manufacturing in, in Costa Rica? You know, I think I, I would kind of put it all together and just say, you know, from a, a logistics standpoint, it's a very great location in relationship to the U.S. The, the labor, the talent is there, not only from a, from a skilled operator standpoint, but from an engineering, from a technician, from an accounting. The labor pool is strong. The motivation behind the employees is great. Uh, very excited to work and, and ready to work. There's definitely some tax advantages in the free trade zones that can be taken um, into consideration for sure. And you also have the ability to service the local industry down there if you have existing U.S.-based relationships that have made their way to Costa Rica. One other thing that I would mention, too, that's it's important is uh, the CAFTA, the Central American Free Trade Agreement, which is essentially comparable to the USMCA that the U.S. has with Mexico and Canada. So with regard to your product being exported to the United States, it comes into the United States duty-free. Is that correct? That is true. And that was definitely a, a factor. Well, we, we get a lot of requests, as you know, from people looking to have things done in Costa Rica. And if somebody is listening to this podcast and they'd like to get in touch with you, Robert, so that they could, uh, uh, if you could execute a project for them, how would they get in touch with you, Robert? You could definitely go to our website, which is www.nacsinc.com, and then submit a request through the, the contact form submission, and that will come directly to me, and we can, we can definitely talk from there. Robert, thanks. It's been a pleasure talking to you. We wish you uh, abundant luck in Costa Rica, and actually... Uh, uh, looking forward to meet you in person someday. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Sign up to receive the Central American Group's quarterly newsletter by visiting www.thecentralamericangroup.com.